He's in the province. In the studio with me now, he's back. Josh Kluter, president of Western Cape Kickboxing. Josh, it's been now, I think, three, three weeks since we last saw you. And the last time we saw you, it was all about preparation for the provincial champs, I think. Yes, Epi, uh, thank you for, for inviting us again. Uh, it seems like we have become a norm now to be on uh, the Cape Weather yeah. Racing TV. And yes, the Western Cape Championships was, 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 was held and uh, very successful. We had all the districts, um, which is members of the, of, of the Federation, that was present. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so was it, this it the was event good. at uh, Weinberg uh, Tumul or at the Civic Center? No, that's the, the, that uh, took place at the Weinberg Civic Center. Yes. The Civic Center. Tell yeah. us a little bit about the day, because uh, um, I know that beforehand we were talking about all the preparation, open to the public, uh, that it was going to be starting early, and of course you guys started the weigh-ins the day before. So from an event point of view, full day. Yes. No, the event started at nine o'clock in the morning. Yeah. And we, we were finished at uh, 5 o'clock with, the, with the, the Tami Sports. And then uh, around about 6 o'clock, we started with the, the Ring Sports. And that finished about just before 8 o'clock. Right. And uh, the Ring Sport format, we, we, we put into a, a fight night format. Yeah. And again, that is just to, to enhance some form of entertainment to, to, to spectators and uh, to those who attended the event as well. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, so one of the things I suppose, from a kickboxing point of view, from the athletes, people are watching the, the show right now. They're thinking, well, I want to get involved in the world of kickboxing. Uh, I mean, we now know, you know, you find a club, come and train a little bit. But what is the what is the pathway for um, for 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 fighters who come, for example, to your club and they join? Where do they go next? Look, the pathway for 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 any kickboxer who wants to participate. Obviously, on, on grassroots level first, like any other uh, athlete. Yeah. And from there, you progress into going to the district uh, championships or the district kickboxing team. And, and, the, and after that, provincial championships, and if you're selected in the provincial kickboxing team, you also go to the nationals. And the nationals <coughs> perform well, get selected for the national team, which will afford you with Britia colors, and that allow you to compete internationally. Um, world championships, but also with, 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 with bilaterals, you know, West Africa only compete with another country yeah. or two or three other countries. So it's not necessarily just for the world championships. So uh, that do, is the line. Do you do events where, uh, for example, it's not part of the, the, the main structure? I mean, because if you look at boxing and you look at MMA, uh, you have these fight nights where it's only one fight. Um, and maybe in weight divisions. Uh, and then on the night, there's maybe just five or six fights. It's not part of a, a provincial championships. This gives the, the fighters the opportunity to be really the, the showpiece. No, you, of yeah. course. And that is part of commercializing kickboxing a bit and also try to create idols from, 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 from the fighters. Yeah. And uh, we do those, those events, uh, and we try to do those events on a monthly basis because that is the event that prepare the fighters for your district championships, for your provincial championships and also for your national championships. I mean, uh, you, you just can't, not, can't have fights during your, the championships. Yeah. Because yeah, you, need, you need in between fights to, you to prep fight, you, you for, 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 for championships. So, yes, no, we, we do that. Uh, we do that a lot. So, is there a sense amongst those fighters that you've got that are training with you that there are going to be times that they are the draw card? They are the, the, the call it the entertainment factor? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, look, we, especially in, in contemporary time when we talk about all the social media. Yeah. I mean, that is what the guys are doing. They, 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 they want to it. fight because they want to be seen and they want to win, want to feel good about it, take the pictures, selfies, you know, yeah. and post it on, on social media. So uh, the kickboxing uh, as a sport are now relatively developing into a uh, entertainment industry, if I can put it like that. Yeah, yeah. That, so is there a feeling uh, for the fighters who compete in the normal district championships, provincials and nationals, is there a feeling for them of like, okay, th this is different, it's fight night, there's going to be all the bells and the whistles and the music and the entertainment, I'm going to be walking through the tunnel with the flashing lights and, and it's going to be crazy. Um, is there a feeling of like, that's a different type of pressure? Because I get the feeling that that takes a unique type of individual. That's not everybody that's cut out for that. No, absolutely. I mean, if you, if, 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 if you haven't been in that situation, then it's difficult to understand and to comprehend it. Um, 
you get fighters really it's psyched up before they hawk onto the catwalk towards the 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 ring cameras in his face yeah. light signing yeah. you know and he's got his coach behind him tap him on the shoulders hawking <laughs> that long hawk to the warrior arena yeah so that the master is of ceremonies the master of ceremonies introducing is, himself you know and he's got a power out go to the ring show business a bit a little bit of harassment test so <laughs> It is something different for, yeah. for, for any person. And not all fighters have the opportunity to, 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 to have that kind of uh, feeling. Yeah. And, uh, but it is something absolutely different for, from a fighter's perspective. So just from a, from a sports psychology point of view, I mean, do you think that we give enough credit to fighters who step into the ring where they're, once you're in the ring, you're, you're, you're on your own. There's no, you're not hiding in a team. Um, you, if you lose, your, your ego, everything is, is taking a knock. That's why I say it takes a unique individual to do that. Do you think we give enough credit on top of districts and championship fighters, but for fighters who are, who are, are basically you know, going the extra mile here, they're, they're committing everything to get into that ring at high risk? Yeah, look, uh, that is what you're saying about uh, the psychology behind it is, is very important, of course. Uh, and I don't think our fighters are always psychologically prepared. Yeah, no. because it's an incredible journey for individuals who have to do that. They're waking up early in the morning. They're doing their, their, their road work. They're going to gym. They've got to watch their eating. They've got to make sure their families still are looked after. Uh, I mean, the, the life of a, of, of a competitor who gets in the ring on his own. Absolutely. That, that is a lifestyle. Yeah. It's not you preparing now for one specific tournament. It's like you're preparing for tournaments on a monthly basis. Yeah. So, so that, that, that's a different lifestyle. It's like yeah. coming back to the, the VK1. The guys used to say this was one of, it was one of the most toughest competitions because every month you know you're going to fight. You fight and then you have a week to recover. You have two weeks to, to, to prep again, one week to psychologically prepare you, and in that week yeah. you are competing. And that's a cycle every month. So, so that was, was extremely difficult for, for, for some guys. But it was also excited yeah, in, yeah. In, 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 in some respect. Josh, we're wrapping it up now. What's next on the cards for you guys, next event? I think the, the, the provincial team is now uh, preparing themselves for, for the South African National Championships. Yeah. We're taking place in, in, in Potsdam in the Northwest province. Okay. So, uh, and we're sending a team of about 75 athletes through there. Yeah. That's without the, the management staff and other coaches. So it, it's going to be a good, strong team that, that's, that's going up. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, we, we, we believe that the Western Cape will do well that side. Yeah, it's exci exciting. And, of course, if anybody wants to join, uh, there's multiple clubs in the districts, the provinces. They can just look for you guys on Facebook and, and find a club near them. Absolutely. And uh, kickboxing, like I said, it is transgressed past that of a sporting crowd. It's now a uh, sport to be practiced for fitness yeah. as well. Yeah. Josh, thanks for joining us. Uh, again, we can't wait to see all the pictures and the videos, and good luck to the Team Western Cape. Baby, thanks for having us. There we go. There we go, folks. Uh, Josh Kluter, president of Western Cape Kickboxing. Uh, go and find a club near you. It's for fitness. It's for self-defense. It's for razzmatazz, as he calls it. Uh, a lot of excitement for for kickboxing in the Western Cape. We'll take a break. When we come back, we'll carry on talking about sport in the province. Back in a sec.